Čau, tady Robert z Gitar.cz, jsme v backstage Blink-182, kde nás čeká krátkej Rick Rundown s technikem Toma z Blink-182. Podíváme se na aparáty, na kytary, na kytarové efekty. Určitě vás to bude zajímat stejně jako mě, já jsem z toho nadšený. Blink-182 poprvé v České republice a my jsme tady pro vás. fast we can get this done before he starts that shit again. <laughs> okay, so let's do it. What happens is Tom will take blends and we do the blends of the Fender Twins and the Vox AC30s, right? Now there's certain songs that'll start out where, uh, like at the beginning of violence, and you'll hear it sounds like an AM radio, just very distorted, very, and it's just these two with a special effect on it. And uh, most of the time the dirty and the clean comes from all four. Yes, absolutely. But when we start off certain songs, you'll just hear the two of them, or he'll put this. <laughs> so he runs most of the stuff through the G for us. That's where we get a lot of our effects from. But we also have this uh, Eddie Van Halen flanger. So when you get the kind of wavering sound, that's coming from that flanger. Now the AB box is in there so that I can run both sides of the wireless at the same time. Uh, Tom used to like to ring out a guitar as I handed him another one, so we never had a loss of sound. There was never dead air. He'd go ring, I hand him the other one, carry it back till he got to it. Yeah, but it's it's not it's not a difficult rig. It just sounds really good, and these things are load-bearing DIs. So much like a uh, DI is a direct input box. Yeah. So if you had a uh, acoustic guitar, that's what you plug it in for the amplification. However, what these do is they take a speaker load so that we don't have to mic up these combos so we don't get bleed over from cymbal, bleed over from bass, and it goes directly to monitors. That way it's a nice, clean, pure tone that's going out to monitors and then out to front of house for the audience. All right, so you don't mic the amps anymore? At all. No, because this takes care of that. And what'll happen is right here, you'll have the mic inputs. And this runs straight to monitor land. Mm -hmm. So he gets a clear sound, Tom gets a clear sound in his ears, front of house gets a clear sound. A lot of times when you put microphones, even if you stick them up in there, Travis is so loud because he's a monster, you know, and he plays so hard and so well that a lot of times you'll get extra sounds of cymbals and it'll split through there. So that way, like if you look under here, that's the speaker jump. Okay, so what do you use to simulate the, the cabinet? Well, I still take the, uh, the, the pre from it. So I do definitely get the cabinet's amplification. I just don't push it through the speakers. So it's, it's getting the true sound from the Voxes and the Fenders but it's not throwing it out into him. Plus the other thing is, is as loud as we like to run stuff, with his microphone being right in front, a lot of times he'll sing, he'll step away, and you'll get so much guitar blowing through the microphone, his vocal mic, that he can't hear anything anymore. I noticed that he used to play a lot of Mesa Boogie amps, right? We played Mesa Boogie and Marshall. Why, why don't you use them anymore? Uh, what ended up happening was when we started doing a lot of the recording, he started really liking the sound of the combos. And, and Vox, is, as you know, is such a nice, nice sounding amp. Um, I mean, hell, take it from uh, Brian May of Queen alone and you get one of the best tones ever. So we had started using that in the studio and he just felt when we were changing and, and some of it was from Angels and Airwaves, but some of it transferred over to here is he just really, really enjoyed that tone that he was getting. And nothing against Mesa Boogie and Marshall. We're still great friends and love them to death. But as you noticed, a lot of the, the newer Blink material isn't as just like rough. And Mesa Boogie is metal as can be. We like it. There they go. Basically all these are like a 335, but they were made for Tom. So one pickup, one knob. Really hot sounding guitar, but he controls it like you wouldn't believe. We've done all the uh, design on it as far as a little bit of spray painting here and there, a little bit of burning. One of my favorite ones is 
this one that we did up. It's uh, you know, more beat up and bruised up than painted. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit of tape. Tom did his little signature sign on there. That's cool. Yeah. You know, and we'll just burn them up a little bit. They they sound amazing. We put an acoustic in his dressing room just so he can kind of warm up and, and do his vocals and all that stuff. Uh, what we used to do was a, a B stage. We'd set out a secondary stage out in front of house. They would do three or four songs acoustically and stuff that you haven't heard in years. So they mm -hmm. would do Going Away to College well, and Dysentery right. Gary and Dick Lips and, you know, all the big <laughs> fan favorites. Well, my favorites too. Um, this is his pedal board. Now, does he use anything to switch sounds himself or do you do? Oh, no, he all? switches them. He does. He definitely switches them. So, but this is uh, Custom Audio Electronics, mm -hmm. which is a uh, uh, Bob Bradshaw one of the most yeah, genius mad scientists in the music industry. So it has 36 banks. Mm -hmm. So you can pop up from one to 36, and then you have four presets across for each bit. So what we'll do is we'll set up certain songs. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what these numbers coincide to. Yeah. So what it is is down here, down here, down here, yeah. we've created different songs which will have a delay on it mm -hmm. it'll have an extra type of flange or a chorus yeah. pedal or, or something along those lines and what it'll be is he'll be able to pop up to that hit that mm -hmm. and then it'll give it and this MIDI signal sends it to his rack yeah, over yeah, there yeah. and that'll give him the desired sound for said song so it's super easy to use on stage, right? Oh, it's very easy. So how many presets does he use live? Is it like uh, one, five, ten? He uses probably about ten about for this. 10. Yeah, we used to only use two. Uh -huh. I mean, we used two banks and four presets yeah. was it. But now we use about ten banks full of all four presets. And, and the, the deal right here is dirty, mm -hmm. clean. D plus is dirty plus, which means it has the extra flange on yeah, it. Yeah clean plus, extra flange, we've got an extra distortion and an extra boost, just in case he doesn't feel like it's grindy enough or, or he's really trying to hit it hard, he'll be able to switch in and out yeah, and yeah. get what he wants. Yeah, that boost. yeah. Okay, so that's great. So that was Doc. Thanks a lot for your time. Absolutely. We appreciate it and Thank you guys so much for coming squad. down. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Enjoy it. You're coming back for the show, yeah? Sure. Yeah, I guess. Oh, you better. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you okay, so much for thanks. coming down. I appreciate it. Yeah.